So what is liquidity? In simple terms, liquidity is an area or a level where business was conducted previously. Institutions purchase a price at a specific level and some retail traders end up taking advantage of the institutional sponsorship and take the trade. And our main objective here is to find out where these retail traders stop losses rest at. So in this example, you can see price being purchased at this demand level. And we're not focused on the entry or why price was purchased there. We're looking at if some retail traders took advantage of this trade, where would their stop losses rest at? Their stop losses would rest at the near swings. And this is where the liquidity will be rested. So let's get into this. So the first type of liquidity we're going to cover is your support and resistance liquidity, which is your equal highs and equal lows. As you can see, price found resistance at this specific level. What does that mean? That means institutions sold at this level and retail traders might have taken advantage of this. So now this level is incentivized to attract price and it will act as a magnet for price to later do what? Run over this level. So as you can see here, price is finding resistance and this level be used as a magnet for price to run through it. So next we're going to cover the trend line liquidity. If you look here, you don't see equal lows. You don't see, you can't pinpoint where the resistance is coming from. Now it could be coming from internal liquidity, but a lot of times retail traders use what you call a trend line. And now liquidity is resting underneath the trend line. So now that trend line becomes a magnet to attract price. So here we have an example of trend line liquidity. Price rejected from the trend line and attracted price. So next up, you have your FTB, your fail to break liquidity. As you can see here, you have a supply level formed and price approaches this level and rejects. So now you have evidence that that level was valid and retail traders might be a part of that move. So anybody that purchased price at that level, their stop losses would go on the swing above. And above that swing would be resting the stop losses, which would be your liquidity. And price would be incentivized to attack that level one more time. So here's an example of your fail to break liquidity. Price formed the supply level. An aggressive reaction from the supply level, forming the liquidity to later be absorbed. So let's take a look at this example. You always want to look to the left and you want to look to what happened previously. What happened here? We know that there was a supply level here. Price came to the supply level and reacted and broke structure. What can we understand from this motion? We can understand is that there were sell orders injected here that pushed price down. But there were so many sell orders that overpowered the buy orders here that pushed price down. So now we know if price comes back to this level, if price comes back to this level, there's not enough sell orders anymore. Why? Because the sell order has been used here. So that means there's not enough sell orders to reject price one more time and price will more than likely continue above. So this would be your FTB, your fail to break liquidity. So now you mark up your liquidity. So now this area would act as a magnet and it would attract price.
and the liquidity has been absorbed. Next, we have FTC failed to close liquidity. And the main characteristic of this liquidity model is that the candle never closes below the range. It just wicks through. The candle wicks through and that level becomes a magnet for price to attract. So what is the primary function of liquidity? So we know that liquidity will attract price. In due time, this level will be absorbed. But what happens next? Price can always continue above and completely continue with the trend or price can reverse and come back into the range. And what does that reverse indicate? That indicates a trap, a stop plan. And what is the function of the stop plan? The stop plan is a trap. In this situation, everybody that thought this was a breakout, that price is going to continue higher, got trapped. And at the same time, the stop losses of who sold at the previous resistance point, their liquidity got absorbed. So let's take a look at this example. So here you have your demand zone. Here you have your order block. Price reacts from this order block. Price reacted from this order block and shot up and broke structure. So what do we know now? We know that there was the buy orders that were injected here were greater than the sell orders that could have been resting here. So now we know when price does come back to this level, it's more than likely going to break through this level instead of rejecting again. Why? Because there might not be enough buy orders in this demand order block. So price is breaking through this level and price broke through this level. But what happened? Price came back into the range, forming the trap, the stop hunt. So the stop hunt has been formed. Everybody that tried to sell in this area. So everybody that tried to sell in this area, thinking this is a breakout and price is going to continue lower, got trapped right here. And everybody that purchased price right here, their stop losses got taken. And price will continue the opposite way. That's the effects of a stop line. Let's talk about inducement. What is inducement? Here you have your point of interest. Price approaches your level, but doesn't get all the way to your point of interest and forms a reaction. What is price trying to do? It's trying to entice you into taking a position, it tries to force you into abandoning your point of interest as if price is not going to reach that level. Price comes back, reacts from that same level and rejects forming liquidity, engineering liquidity. They're trying to entice you into taking a short before price actually takes the liquidity goes to your point of interest and reacts. So your point of interest is formed and now you're waiting for price to revisit that level. Price attempts to induce you by reacting from a level close to your point of interest to later on actually visit your point of interest and then react from it. So how would you trade liquidity and inducement? Of course, you can trade liquidity in a continuation form, but let's focus on the inducement part. So first of all, you want to locate the liquidity. In this case, here's your liquidity. What kind of liquidity is this? This is This is FTC, failed to close. Why is it your failed to close? Because of this wick. So 
So now you know liquidity is resting under this level. So now you look for your point of interest. In this case, I'm looking at this discounted order block. So now what you're waiting for is for price to run on liquidity, go to your point of interest and then react. So let's talk about the inducement secrets and what makes a valid inducement. So here you have your range. This would be your range. So now we pull out our FIP that's broken into four. So basically, the four parts are The four parts are 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. And this would be your discounted level, and this would be your premium level, and this would be your fair price. So what you would want essentially is you would want your inducement to happen in the 50%. You'd want your inducement to be here. You wouldn't want your inducement to be here and then for price to reach your level or even close by to the premium. Why? Because think of it as this. Think of it as you have orders here in the premium zone, which, which your point of interest is located in. You don't want price to come here and come back up. Why? Because if it hits this level and then comes back up and then comes back in, more than likely now you have a FTB situation. Now you have a FTB situation, which means the liquidity is rested right here and price will more than likely go against you. So again, you would want your liquidity in the 50%. And the reaction, of course, is in your point of interest that always has to be located in your extremes. If you're buying, you want to buy in discount. If you want to sell, you want to sell in premium. So let's see. Okay, here you have your inducement. Price went to the 50% and came back up. So now if price goes straight to your discounted level, you would expect to get into a buy here. And this is what makes a successful inducement. And here you have it. This was your liquidity. And this was your stop hunt that went straight to your point of interest.